David Nakamura is a reporter for The Washington Post and joins me to talk about this and much more. David, let's start with health care. How will Washington move on from this, both Democrats and Republicans? Well, Lane, as your clips there showed, uh, even though the White House and Tom Price uh, might be saying we have to move quickly, uh, you know, and, that, and calling on Congress to do their job, I mean, the real fact of the matter is that health care is a very difficult topic. Uh, that requires uh, probably going back to regular order, as your clip from Susan Collins suggested, and going through the painstaking process of doing hearings, getting input, and whether that means crossing the aisle and working with Democrats or not, uh, producing some sort of bill that would obviously gain more support. Because as much as the president is tweeting about changing the rules and getting rid of the filibuster and just making it a straight up and down 50, 51 vote, uh, process or even 50 vote process with the vice president breaking a tie. Uh, we all know that this past health care uh, uh, repeal bill uh, failed to even get to that threshold of 50. So uh, they, the Republicans have a lot of work to do. The question is if they're going to keep prioritizing health care in this manner. Uh, at the president's uh, encouragement or move on to something else like tax reform? Well, the president has given mixed signals on this, David, saying Republicans should let Obamacare implode, but also calling Republicans quitters for not continuing efforts to repeal the law. What is the White House's official message here? I think the president is really stung in that he, you know, has hoped to get a, what you might call a victory by getting something, uh, almost anything done on this health care process. Um, and he felt that he had resurrected the talks after they appeared dead a few weeks ago uh, and got to the threshold. And, you know, we all know John McCain uh, battling brain cancer, you know, makes this sort of dramatic uh, return to Washington and then stands in the way of this going forward. And uh, McCain was very eloquent in, as to why uh, he believed it was rushed and that it was not a good uh, outcome uh, and that they needed to keep working on it. But to answer your question, I think the president kind of wants it both ways. He's frustrated. He wants a victory. On the other hand, he knows that if it doesn't go forward, which is what and it has this impasse that we have right now, he wants to lay the groundwork that Obamacare is not something he's going to take the blame for uh, if the markets collapse in, in months or, or, uh, or next year uh, and, and, the, and the system really uh, has even more problems. Uh, he's going to try to sort of set that as a, the problem of Democrats and or even Senate Republicans who didn't support something. Well, Reince Priebus and Sean Spicer are on their way out. John Kelly and Anthony Scaramucci are in. What do these changes mean, David, for the White House? Well, look, I mean, I think that the idea of bringing in a four-star retired Marine general um, is, you know, symbolic but also practical in the idea that he comes from a culture of discipline, a little bit more rigor. And, you know, President Trump, we all know, likes this sort of a little bit of a chaotic management structure that's somewhat flat and allows aides to sort of walk in almost unannounced to the Oval Office and get in the president's ear uh, and try to have influence with him. That's not traditionally how White Houses work, and that's the role of the chief of staff to uh, create lines of communication, a little bit more structure uh, in the West Wing, uh, and maybe cut off some of the access to the president and keep him more focused. Uh, I don't think anybody thinks that General Kelly uh, is going to cut off the tweeting or maybe some of the statements the president uh, likes to give, uh, you know, almost on a sort of uh, ad hoc or, or a real time basis to reacting to news. But I think, again, getting, you know, the different aides who have different opinions to work their process through direct certain channels and then present the president with options and allow him to pick from those. I think that's how you might want it to, to, to happen. But People have pointed out that General Kelly, while he had a distinguished military career and may have made some progress at DHS in the short six months, doesn't have legislative experience, doesn't have this sort of management experience or political experience that this job might require. So that's the big challenge. Well, in the wake of this shakeup, do we have any sense, David, if there will be more moves to come still? I think there could be. I mean, first of all, Kelly, I think, would want to take the lay of the land and maybe bring in some of his own staff. There's already uh, some reports that he intends to bring on his own a chief of staff from DHS to some sort of job in the West Wing. Uh, and then I think he's got to get on the same page with the other new hire, and Anthony Scaramucci, who has come in and said, hey, we need to let Trump be Trump. And Scaramucci himself has gotten into hot water over his own comments uh, in the story to the, the comments of the New Yorker reporter that was made public last week, in which he sort of was going after leakers, going after Priebus uh, and others, including Steve Bannon, who remains an important advisor to President Trump. Uh, getting on the same page. You know, the communications job it may, get, it may get lost in the shuffle. It's not the press secretary. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be longer-term strategic thinking and telling a story 
about where the White House wants to go. We don't have that. We have the, you know, if anything, Scaramucci added to the uh, idea that there's chaos and infighting uh, and people looking out for themselves. Yeah, it's a really good point that it's really a strategic kind of right. long view the communications position is. Meantime, David, North Korea continues working on its missile program, something the president said would not happen once he got into office. What has been the White House strategy so far in trying to get North Korea to stop its provocative behavior? To, I mean, to be fair, this is a, a issue with dealing with Pyongyang and its continued march toward a uh, intercontinental missile that could deliver a warhead to the continental United States. This is something that's bedeviled each administration. They've tried direct talks under George Bush. Uh, eventually, Obama, Obama got frustrated and cut those off and tried, you know, harder economic sanctions. We saw Trump initially try to lean on China, which is always part of anybody's strategy because uh, Beijing has more uh, influence, if anybody has influence, with uh, Kim, the Kim Jong Un uh, regime. But we've already seen the president get frustrated that China's not doing enough, uh, and China has their own, you know, geostrategic, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, priorities. Uh, some of which include keeping a, a stable uh, North Korea in place. Um, and I think what you're seeing now is that there are no good options. Um, and all this chaos at the White House. I was on the trip with President Trump on Friday when he fired uh, or announced the resignation of. Uh, uh, Reince Priebus uh, on the tarmac as we landed, and mm -hmm. Reince Priebus was on the plane. You know that we, we were shouting out questions to the president all along the trip. Uh, you know about the Russian sanctions, about the chaos in his White House, about the health care. North Korea was fourth or fifth on the list, and and and, and yet in the you know the global scheme of things, it's one of the most important things we're dealing with. So uh, I think, you know, it's interesting, John Kelly, of course, coming from the military, you got H.R. McMaster, another uh, retired general as head of the National Security Council, uh, and of course, Jim Mattis at the Pentagon. You know, now you have the president who sort of relies on these generals. We'll see if they can come up with some new strategy uh, with North Korea. But I think one last point is the biggest uh, piece missing might be direct talks, and that's where Rex Tillerson and the State Department come in. And as we all know, he seems to have less influence uh, and uh, certainly a decimated staff at this point uh, with a lot of open jobs. Yeah, still very much uh, a lot of questions about what the United States will change in its mm -hmm. approach to North Korea, right. if anything. David Nakamura, thanks so much. Thanks, Elaine.